Hello and welcome to ADHD Support Talk Radio. My name is Tara McGillicuddy and I am the host of ADHD Support Talk Radio. I'm an adult ADD and ADHD productivity coach and I'm also the founder and director of ADDclasses.com and at ADDclasses.com we provide virtual support and education to people affected by ADD and ADHD. We offer free webinars. We have an extensive ADD audio library with more than 175 hours of courses. And we also offer more in-depth support programs. You can learn more about ADDclasses.com and sign up for a free webinar at ADDclasses.com by simply going to the website www.addclasses.com. And coincidentally, the guest that we have on today actually has a free on-demand webinar up right now that's available until the end of the month. So you can sign up for Lynn's class about punctuality and being on time by going to addclasses.com. If you sign up before May 31st, you can listen to it for free. If you find this podcast recording sometimes, sometime after May 31st, you can go to addaudiolibrary.com, and there's a small membership fee, and you can access that class in addition to over 175 other classes. So with that, I would like to welcome back Lynn Edrith to ADHD Support Talk Radio. In just a moment, we are going to be talking about perfectionism and ADHD. But Lynn, before we get started talking about perfectionism, can you let our listeners know a bit about yourself and how to get in touch with you after they listen to today's show. Sure. Uh, my name, again, is Lynn Idris, and I'm a life and ADHD coach. Uh, I specialize in working with adults with ADHD and those, you know, professionals who struggle with things like disorganization and poor time management, procrastination, and having too much on their plates. So for the last decade or so, I've worked with individuals from all over the world to help them uncover their own strengths and talents and to overcome their challenges to live a more fulfilling and productive life. I'm a woman with ADD myself, so I'm very passionate about helping my clients start firing on all cylinders, and um, you know, it's something that I, I feel like I was born to do. Sounds a little hokey, but if you can learn a little bit more about me, uh, my website is www.coachingadvantages with two Ds. So it's coachingaddvantages.com. Great stuff. Definitely check out Lynn's website. She has some great resources. So you were on a few weeks back, and we were talking about chaos. And as part of the podcast a few weeks back, we ended up talking a bit about perfectionism. And we, you know, decided afterwards that perfectionism is such a huge, important topic that, hey, maybe we should dedicate a whole podcast episode to perfectionism. So where would you like to begin when it comes to perfectionism, Lynn? It is such a pervasive challenge for my clients, both, you know, my my ADHD clients. And perfectionism is not spelled out in the DSM. It's not clinical, you know, diagnostic criteria. But it is such a pervasive challenge among my clients, among the population with ADHD, that really goes unaddressed in literature. It really goes unaddressed in, in very much that you're going to hear and you're going to read about in ADHD. But it is a cornerstone to so many of our struggles. So we did got, we, you know, our, our conversation about chaos turned to a bit of a rant on perfectionism, but it's, it's, it's so important. I mean, we could do a whole series of podcasts on perfectionism. It really should be, I think, addressed in the DSM and the, and the, clinical, the clinical standards for ADHD. You know, most of my clients with, that, I, that I coach, most of my clients with ADHD or with ADHD-type challenges don't even realize that they're perfectionists, and I can relate to that. I mean, when I was younger, when I was trying to get a handle on my ADHD stuff and people started, you know, kind of referring to me as a perfectionist, I, I thought it was actually a riot that, that somebody would call me a perfectionist. But now looking in the rearview mirror, you know, that's clearly a big part of where I struggle. You know, I used to say, I'm a mess. You know, how can I be a perfectionist? At that point in my life, I was a, like a physical mess, <laughs> you know, chaos and clutter and, you know, disorganization. And I was a mess, you know, organizationally in other ways, time management, all of those sort of typical ADD things. So it was hard to see myself as a perfectionist, and it was hard for me to see that my sort of perfectionistic tendencies were contributing to a lot of the things that I, I was struggling with. Things like, you know, the typical ADD stuff, you know, the, the, the non-rocket science stuff. 
um, you know, at work, keeping up with paperwork, keeping up with reporting, keeping up with sort of the more mundane things. At home, cleaning, paper management, clutter, you know, organization, time management, all of that stuff can be impacted by our, our struggle with perfectionism. We have a tendency to look at things in a very all or nothing black and white way. There's a right way to do something and you know, there's a wrong way to do something. And often that whole doing things the right way or not doing them at all is what gets in our way. You know, we wait for motivation. We wait for energy. We wait for, I always say, like the moon and the stars and the planets mm -hmm. to align for us to be able to do something that we need to do because we think it has to be done a certain way for it to really sort of count. And that really gets in our way. It, procrastination can often really be rooted in our in our tr troubles with perfectionism, difficulty with follow through, difficulty getting started, struggling with completion. You know, a lot of that goes back to perfectionism. You know, there's a right way to yeah. do it. I don't have the time, the energy, what I need, you know, the motivation to do it the way it ought to be done, and that shuts us down. You know, we tend to have high standards mm -hmm. for ourselves and for the, the things that we do, and that can really shut us down. Um, you know, we talk in coaching about all or nothing thinking, you know, not seeing sort of the in-between as, as, as sort of intuitive and as, as well as we see connections, we often don't see that the middle ground is, is what we need to be aiming for. So, you know, we often see that, that we either do it one way or we don't do it at all. We either, you know, approach it a certain way, we either do it with our full, you know, 100% effort, 100% attention, or we do nothing. And that, you know, that yeah. perfectionism, that all or nothing thinking really can, can cause us to get stuck. Yeah, and you brought up something when you first started talking that I think is so important that <clears> – <throat> You did not really identify with the word perfectionism. Oh, no, that's not me. And I think that is a huge issue for a lot of people with ADHD in order to kind of deal with perfectionism or understand how it's getting in the way and how you can adapt to it, change things. I think you first have to kind of buy into the fact that you are a perfectionist. And, you know, you said you didn't buy into it first. I didn't. I remember people saying that years ago. And I'm like, I'm so not a perfectionist. And it's like, uh, yeah, I am. That's why it's like that all or nothing. Can't do it. It's not going to be perfect or it's it's not worth doing because I hate doing it. And that black and white thinking perfectionism. So many of us with ADD and ADHD have that perfectionism and we don't identify with it at first. We don't, and that's – you can't fix what you don't recognize. Mm -hmm. And you can't and, – and if that – perfectionism is an underlying sort of, you know, theme in the way you look at things, we have to address that. We have to, I always say that's a tough nut to crack, but it's a nut we have to crack. No amounts of, you know, mm -hmm. systems and tools and tips and tricks and behavior management, or any of that stuff is going to stick if deep down, you know, you're thinking that it's not, you know, it's not the right way to do it. It's not enough. It's not good enough. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, all all of those things. I mean, it is such a pervasive challenge, and it's it's a huge one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking for that thinking, you know, we call that again black or night, black or white, or all or nothing thinking. Those sort of, you know, extremes. So if you're thinking or you're saying things like, you know the right way, the only way, the best way mm -hmm. um, about something that, that you have to, need to, want to, ought to do, yeah. that's perfectionism. That's yeah. black and white thinking. That's where that comes into play. And it really gets in the way it does. of everything, everything. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Like, I didn't really identify with it at first. And I, went, I was thinking about when I was in school and, like, in school, I either got A's or F's. My C's, when I got them on my report card, were usually a combination of, like, 100s and F's. So it was like I had that all or nothing black and white thinking, and it, and it it really, so many of us, and I think that the all or nothing, the black and white thinking, my way or the highway, if mm -hmm. that's something you uh, say or think, it, that's a sign that you're probably a perfectionist. Yep. And that, it it's the... You know, we have as ADHDers that the struggle, that the activation struggle part of, of our executive function so that, mm -hmm. you know, not to go into executive function too deeply here, but, you know, those our executive functions are sort of those higher order mental processes that allow us to organize information and, and organize, you know, things in time and in space. And it's sort of that higher level thinking stuff. Mm -hmm. 
the activation piece that we struggle with is the getting started piece. That's a big one for all of us with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And that perfectionism piece often underlies that. You know, I don't have the time, I don't have the energy, I don't have the resources, or I don't even know what to do to get started on this thing to do it the right way so I won't do it at all. Yeah. I mean, it shows up it shows up everywhere. For me, I think one of the biggest places it showed up when I was younger and ADHD was kind of running rampant was in the whole housework area. You know, being a being a new wife um, at the time, you know, when I, I started realizing that my, my ADHD stuff was really, you know, taking a toll and I started to really identify what was going on, I was really having a hard time keeping up with housework. And, you know, God bless my husband. He's like the most organized person in the whole world, just one of those really naturally sort of tidy, organized, you know, people, mm -hmm. fortunately, um, you know, was very patient, but it was really hard for me, you know, working full time and having all, you know, the responsibilities and things to juggle that you do as you're sort of a new adult to, to clean the house. Because in my mind, you know, to clean it right was hands and knees, you know, yeah. corner to corner, top to bottom until it sparkled. And there aren't very many days in my life, really, that I can identify having the energy, <laughs> let alone having the desire and the interest to get into that. Cleaning housework, that's just so not my thing. It's, you know, everybody's different, um, but that is definitely not something that's of a whole lot of interest for me. I do it because it has to be done. But I had this deep down belief that you had to clean right or it wasn't worth cleaning at all. Mm -hmm. So what would happen and happens with a lot of my clients is then I don't clean until it gets to, you know, kind of crisis mode or it, somebody's coming over or yeah. it gets to the point where you can't take it anymore and, you know, you kind of snap and then all of a sudden that's stimulating enough for you to get started on the on the cleaning. And you could substitute anything for cleaning, you know, whatever the thing yeah. is that you, that you put off. But it's that you know, that super high standard that there's a right way to do it and mm -hmm. anything less is really not worth the effort, not worth getting started. Sometimes it's not that conscious of a thought process, but, oh, I can't do it now or, oh, not, yeah. now's not the time. You know, I'll do it later. I'll, I'll get to it later. That was really deeply rooted in, in perfectionism for me. Mm -hmm. Same thing with paper management, you know, keeping on top of the paper in my house and in my office you know, back then was a was a real struggle. Not that it's you know super fun and easy now, <laughs> but I'm but I'm on mm -hmm. top of it. But that's having the right system. Yeah. How are you supposed to file things? You know, supposed to is one of those kind of trigger words as well that talks. You know, kind of gives you a clue that you're looking at things from a perfectionistic standpoint. What's the right way to file? How's the what's the best system? You know, how what's the best way to do it to get it done? All of those things. You know, whether it's cleaning, bill paying. Um, mm -hmm. You know, picking up clutter, that's a that's a big one. You know, there's a right way to put things away. There's a right way to store things. There's a, you know, if you don't have time to do it all at once, you know, you're not going to do it at all. And it, it's, I mean, it just, it is so pervasive and it is so fundamental underneath so many of our challenges that if we don't yeah. address it, really nothing sticks. Yeah. I mean, I had, you were talking about cleaning and like growing up, one of the battles I had with my parents, especially my mother, was cleaning my room. And I, they didn't know I had ADHD. And I'd be in there for hours and spending so much energy. And I'd make some dents in it. I, I, it'd be a lot cleaner than it was, et cetera. My mother would come in and find this under the bed or that. And it was like, <laughs> I want to clean the way I like it. So it was like, there's her perfectionism coming out right. on me. Yep. So, yeah, when I, I, and there's still times where it's like, okay, my apartment's a mess, why bother? It's, you know, it, but it's that deep-seated, it's ingrained in a lot of us. And, you know, we talked yeah. about housework, but paperwork, anything else, I mean, work. Um, a lot of people do that at work, and they um, procrastinate or miss deadlines because perfectionism really gets in the way. Oh yeah, any, any it could be anything really. I mean, mm -hmm. even things that you love to do, and sometimes those are the things that are the hardest because you want to do them, you know, you want to do them, you know, your best way mm -hmm. can really cause can really cause problems or can really result in problems from perfectionism. I have yeah. actually a couple clients right now who are professional writers, mm -hmm. um, and and that's a that's a huge one. Just getting yeah. started. When, you know, when perfectionism is under there, let alone bringing something to c completion, mm -hmm. you know, kind of wrapping something up when perfectionism is in the way, it's, it, it, it's big. It's, it's 
absolutely fundamental, absolutely foundational. It's a, it's a really pervasive, it's a, a huge problem for all of my clients. Really I think is. the thing is you can begin to shift out of that perfectionism mode and get things completed or make a, or get started or make a big dent. And I know for me and a lot of my clients, what's been helpful is looking at things like, okay, spend 10 minutes working on doing your dishes. And yes. or 20 minutes, just so instead of focusing on getting all the dishes done and them being perfect, what they're focusing on is a block of time of 10 minutes, and they've made that dent. But a right. lot of people, it was weird for them to like, what do you mean just work on it for 10 minutes? No, I need to it get it done. doesn't count, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's important for right. you to get started, and, and you make a huge dent in 10 minutes or 20 minutes or yeah. whatever the time thing block is, but into – to look at it as what does complete mean instead of what is perfect, what is the right. best. It's hard right. to – I would say hard. It's it's an adjustment. But it when you start shifting to that and practicing it, that perfectionism, yeah, there's still things that we're going to be have issues with perfectionism about, but the fact that we know it and that we can change our mindset can really make a huge difference. Huge. and that's And that's what it's all about. It's about recognizing it identifying it when it happens, and then learning how to reframe those things. So we talked a little bit about this during the chaos and or, chaos versus order podcast, but, you know, one of the, the sort of the ways to reframe or the ways to rethink about, you know, do, the all or nothing perfection stuff is to, to define what's good enough. Mm-hmm. That phrase in and of itself for most, the vast majority of my clients, if not all, is really difficult. That mm-hmm. That sort of you know, concept of, of good enough equates to shoddy workmanship. It equates to yeah. laziness. It equates to shortcuts. You know, and we we it's very nice and it's sort of very very trite sort sort of you know, in our society to say you know always try your hardest. And I've yeah. caught myself saying that to my kids multiple times. You know, you always want to do your best. You always want to want to try your hardest. But honestly, if you if you think about life and the stuff that we have to do, not every single thing you do deserves you to try your best and, no. and work your hardest. So if that's the sort of that's the 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 mantra that's drilled into us, you know, from very early on, and we tend to be pretty literal, right? You know, we ate yes. deer. So we latch on to this stuff and it becomes sort of I, I always frame it as the 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 filter that you see the world through. It's it's the mm-hmm. lens you see the world through. You've got to change that filter. You've got to work actively to change the way you see things, the way you perceive things, and to start to look at them differently. So mm-hmm. for my clients who don't like the, the good enough expression, you know, I had a client once who said, when you say good enough, I hear, you know, close enough for state work, or I hear shoddy workmanship. Mm-hmm. So, you know, look at other ways to frame it. Yeah. Look at other phrases that you can use, you know, sufficient, appropriate um, I always tell my clients, you know, before you get started on anything, define what's sufficient. Yeah. So it's not define what's done perfectly, mm-hmm. not define what's done in an ideal world. You know, if the moon and the stars and the planets aligned and you had all the energy, you know, that you had when you were two, you know. But what do you really need to have accomplished for you to be able to call it done? And sometimes it's depending on what it is for you to be able to call it done right now. Yeah, And then look at, you know, balance that out with where is your energy? What time do you have? You know, what piece of that and start to look at it differently and, and work yourself into it. I had a client years ago who who kind of gave me a new a new term that I share with clients all the time. Instead of good enough, he was a computer programmer. And he said in, in, in programming, they have sort of a, a phrase for when code is written really well, and it does exactly what it needs to do, but it doesn't do a whole bunch of extra crap. So there's not a whole bunch of extra, you know, loops or language in the coding. They call that coding elegant. Mm. And I like that. I've I've yeah. latched onto that. I've used that for years. So what's elegant in this situation? You know, that that speaks to what's appropriate, what's sufficient, but it has a a, a tone of you know, quality to it that maybe good enough doesn't for for some mm-hmm. people. So yeah. really, it's about you know identifying it, noticing it, learning how to reframe, you know. But that whole identifying it and noticing it is it's hard because yeah. that's the you know for most of us that's sort of the default lens that we've seen the world through for 
our whole lives, you know, and that's the, you know, we don't question that. And until we learn to question the way we look at things, the way we think about things, the way we perceive things, nothing really changes. Mm-hmm. And, and going back to like the grades in school, at one point, a C plus or a B minus was okay or good. And then it just, I don't know what happened in society. Everybody wanted an A plus. And oh, don't get me started. Yeah. Yeah. And a C plus, <laughs> it's crazy. That's a B minus. That is good. Yep. And that's a heck of a lot better than an F or an incomplete. Yes, I mean, that, if we look yes, at it, it that way, because that's one thing I've heard some coaches suggest, let's shoot for 75% or shoot for 80%. And I think that's hard for a lot of people, especially people, you know, I'm in my early 40s, and I think anyone younger than me, it's like it was like that all or nothing, that A plus, Mm -hmm. you you shoot for an A. And, you know, so getting back to A, B minus is good. And the thing is, like, we have rough drafts when it comes to life. We have first drafts, and 80% could be done, and hey, if we have the energy, if we have the time, if, you know, we want to, we can turn a B minus into an A plus, but just get right. the B minus done and complete, and it, yeah, right. it's, and it's you start about feeling so much awareness. better about yourself when yeah. you shift away from the all or nothing perfectionism mode, and I think that's, you know, we want to get things done, we want to be productive, but I think the biggest thing is we want to be peaceful and happy, and a lot of us forget that. Yep. For sure. It's, it's a, there's a quality of life, you know, there's a quality of life issue here as well. I had a, a client a little bit earlier this morning who's working on some new goals. And with my clients, I'm always aiming for better. You know, we want to be aiming mm-hmm. for better, not aiming for perfect, not aiming for 100% because, you know, nobody's perfect. I mean, we're human. That's by definition. We're not perfect. And he, the one brand new goal he was working on just started sort of you know keeping an eye on it sort of tracking it last week he had oh i forget what it was but it was less than 35 percent. so it was less than a third Mm -hmm. but it was up from zero it was a brand new a brand new goal that he was working on and he was like well this one you know excuse my expression but kind of bit the big one you know i only got 31 percent or whatever it was Mm -hmm. and i was like well let's back up a minute where did you start with this you know, and actually it was exercise that we were we were looking at. And exercise is a big one for a lot of my clients. How much were you exercising before? Well, he wasn't. So he was at zero before. That's a pretty good jump. Yes. That's, That's 33% to, from zero is a 333% yeah. improvement. That's mm-hmm. a big jump. It yes, might it look is. like failure to other people. And then we get into the whole, you know, what? how do you define, you know, sufficient? And exercise is is huge and it's been huge mm-hmm. for me, you know, perfectionism yeah. wise, you know, at different times in my life. Mm-hmm. So if all you count is, you know, a five mile run or, you know, an hour at the gym full out and you, yeah. you're only getting there, you know, a couple of times a week or a couple of times a month to that level of exercise, then maybe you yeah. need to re-examine yeah. how perfectionism might be getting in the way. When I started mm-hmm. to look at any, if I do anything for 15 minutes as counting as, you know, exercise, it totally opened up sort of my head, (laughs) my thinking around exercise and made it easier for me to get started. Because again, Mm -hmm. a lot of it is about getting started. So if I don't have the energy at, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning to to work, to run for an hour, not that I could if I, you know, (laughs) or half an hour or do whatever for an hour, you know, but I can make myself get started and, and commit to 15 minutes on the treadmill. Yeah. You know, now, we are down, actually so at the end of today's um, show, believe it or not. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to leave people with today? And could you make sure you give out your contact information once again? Really, the the big thing is awareness. So pay attention to how your perfectionism, your black and white thinking might be getting in the way of what it is that you're trying to achieve. That's the that's my takeaway for today. Again, my name's Lynn Idris. You can learn more about me at uh, my website, www.coachingaddvantages.com, uh, where you can check out you know more about me, what I do in terms of coaching, but also some programs and 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 other um, products that I offer as well. Okay, thank you so much, Lynn Idris, and thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to ADHD Support Talk Radio, and be sure to stop by our new website at adhdsupporttalk.com.